Hey guys, how you doing? Hey, we get questions all the time on what we use and how we record our videos. Today we're going to show you how we use one of our new favorite apps, Pixelmator, to do something that you'd be interested in. So stay tuned. Today we're going to show you how we use one of our apps that we've shown you before, Pixelmator. Now before we showed you how to make channel art with Pixelmator, today I'm going to show you how to do an overlay that you can use in your photo editor. Alrighty, so we are in my iPad now and I'm going to show you how to make the overlay that we're actually using right now. And you see the iPad screen fits perfectly in there and it has the the overlay on the right and left instead of just black bars. We're going to do that in Pixelmator and Pixelmator app is in my YouTube editing box in the bottom right. And I'm going to open up Pixelmator and we're going to create a new project in Pixelmator and to do that I'm going to go to the top left and press the plus button and I'm going to create an image so press on create image and I'm going to create a custom image so we're going to press on custom and we want this canvas to be the same size as our videos that we do and that's 1920 by 1080. So in order to make this 1920 by 1080, we're going to go down to the bottom where it has the size 2048 by 1536. We're going to press on that and we're going to change that dimension to 1920 by 1080. 1920 by 1080. And then we're just going to press on the white canvas. That creates a new canvas that is 1920 by 1080. We're going to go to the top right and press create. And then this creates a canvas that we can work on we can pinch and zoom. We can move it around, etc. Now, remember from our last video that we did on Pixelmator, if you didn't watch that again, check that out in the eye in the sky, which I showed you how to make channel art for your YouTube channel. So on the left hands of your iPad, if you just drag that over, you'll get this black bar that shows your layers. And right now we only have one one layer and that's our white canvas. And you see it's indicated because it's um, surrounded in a blue highlight. We want to cut this white canvas down to get to the transparent layer. And it's really easy. You just press on the paintbrush on the top. We're going to go down to where it says select. Press select. We're going to select the rectangular selection tool. You don't see it, but if you press on your white box, you'll get the rectangular selection tool. There it is. And what we want to do is just make sure that we drag it over and lock it into place on all four edges and it will magically just pop right in. Pretty cool. And so just make sure you're on all four edges like that. The top right so you can continue to work on this press done. And then in the middle of your white canvas, just press. You'll bring up this little dialog box and in here just press delete. And voila, we're down to our transparent background. And we want to save this, so on the top left, just press images. And from this point here, it says it's image 11. And we can change the name of that. So if we just go in and press where it says image 11, and we get the little dialog box here, and we're just going to name it new overlay. Alrighty, and then done. And then open that back up. Now you see it's named new overlay. We're just going to open it back up and we can continue to work on it. And you can see we can pinch and zoom. Um, I like to have my little sidebar open so I see my layers and what level they are. So what we're going to do is bring in our background. And the background that I that you see on the screen right now is um, kind of a technical looking one um, that I found. And I'm going to use it. It's saved actually in my camera roll on my iPad that I'm on right now. So in order to pull that in, I'm just going to go to the plus button on the top and I'm going into photos. So on the top there, you have this, this area here, you have the text area, and then over to the far left, you have your camera roll. And I'm going to go into my camera roll. Well, before I do that, you could actually go down to the bottom and you could actually take a photo right from your iPad to use, um, or you could press insert and you can insert it from these locations that default or that if you press on locations it gives you the option then to import it from iCloud Drive or Google Drive or Dropbox if you have those connected to your iPad but we're not going to do that 
So I'm gonna press on camera roll. And here I have, you know, several images and things saved that I've been working on. And I'm, I, I see the one that we want, so I'm just gonna press it. It just brings it right into Pixelmator for us. And it's not the right size. You see, it's the iPad size. I'm just gonna drag it over to the right and drag it over to the left. And it makes it bigger, but that's all right. I like that size like that. And I like it just like that. So that's pretty cool. I like that background. For some reason, it just kind of caught my eye. What we want to do though now is cut out a middle area that is going to be where the iPad screen will actually fit. And it creates um, a cool little overlay. You can do this um, for other games. Um, you can do it for anything you want. And then this overlay you can put into your editing software and then go from there. If you use OBS Studio like we do for a lot of things, then you can actually put this into OBS Studio as a source and um, and record or live stream, whatever, and you're, you're good to go. So it's pretty cool. So let's keep going. We're gonna create a cutout area. In order to do that, we wanna cut out the iPad screen size, which is 2048 by 1536. So the best way to do that is to go up to the plus. We're gonna bring in a square box and you can have different colors. Let's just do uh, orange. We'll bring in an orange box and right now it's a square box but we want it to be the dimensions of um like i said 2048 by 1536. go up to the paintbrush if you're in the arrange box there you see size right now it says it's 810 by 539. if you press on that you'll get these boxes where you can change the size we want to change it to 2048 by 1536. Okay, there you see how it made it um, bigger and we're just going to press now on that orange box kind of locks it into place and then what we want to do is we before we pinch or zoom or make any changes to that orange box because you see it's not quite where we want it we want to go back into paintbrush we want to press on that area where it says 2048 by 1536 and you see that little button there that says Constrain Properties? We're gonna turn that on. And then we can press back on our box. Now, um, we can take this button here, we can shrink this down, and you see we can move it around. And no matter what we do, it stays in the same exact proportion that, we, that our iPad screen will be, no matter if it's little or big, okay? You don't want it to go outside your canvas, but we do want it to be in the middle. So what we want to do is take this up to the top. Again, it kind of locks in. You can drag this bottom middle button down till it locks into the bottom. And we want to, I want to put this in the middle of the screen. So in order to do that, if you drag it, you know, you left and right till you get the crosshairs. You have the crosshairs, you know, you're exactly in the middle, just let up on it and you're in the middle. Now, if you didn't see those crosshairs, the reason why is because your settings are not allowing you to do that. So if you go up to the top where it has a little gear icon and where it says guides, make sure all your guides are turned on. Now we have the size. That's where the iPad screen is going to go. Um, but we need to cut that area down to the transparent background. So in order to do that, we're going to press on the paintbrush. We're going to go into the area that says tools. So not arrange where it's on, not style, but tools. And down, we're going to press on the select button again. Remember, we did that earlier. We're going to press on the rectangular selection. You don't see it there, but if you press on your orange box, there's the rectangular selection. We want to change that rectangular selection to be the exact size of our box. And it's really easy because it'll lock into place. Just drag it over, lock it to the edge. You see it popped in there. Take it to the top, take it to the left side, take it to the bottom. And you see it's exactly the dimension that we need. And we want to cut that out. In order to cut that out before you can cut it out, you have to go to the top right where it says done and just press done. I don't know why, just part of the program. And then what you can do then now is press on that orange box. You'll get this dialog to cut, copy, paste, delete, duplicate. We're gonna delete it. So we're gonna press delete. Okay, it deleted the orange box, but it left our little marching ants around. Um, 
And now we want to cut out that part of the background so we can get down to the transparent layer again. As you see over on the left hand side in your layer box, the top layer is indeed our background picture. The layer underneath that, which you may not be able to see, is the checkered area. That's the transparent background. We want to get down to that transparent background. So all you have to do, you're, you already have your marching ants. Just press inside that box. You'll get that dialog again. Just press delete. And there you go. You're down to that transparent background. I like to go, like I said, several times and just click into images and I can open it back up. And I want to lock that layer in so I don't mistakenly mess it up. So and in order to do that, if you're selected on the layer like that, then if you go into the paintbrush, if you go down to where it says format, you see the little lock icon, just press the lock icon, that'll lock into place. Then you can move that around. It doesn't move your background, it just moves your whole project around. Okay, so let's bring in our two CJ's logo or any logo you have saved or whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. That's the great thing about this. So in order to do that, we're gonna press on our plus icon. Gonna go back to the top area where it says our photos. We're gonna press on photos. We're gonna go into our camera roll. Again, you could insert it from Dropbox or Google Drive or iCloud Drive. Um, we're gonna import it right from our camera roll. And inside our camera roll, I have a um, folder set up for YouTube for photos that I will put in there so it's easier to easier to find them so in order to get there I'll just press on the photos and then scroll up a little bit now you see my area says YouTube I'm just gonna press on YouTube and there's my two CJ's logo I'm gonna bring it in I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit to about that should be about right and then I'm gonna drag it up to the top left and then I'm gonna bring in our answers from dad logo. So again, press plus, go back into the camera roll, I go back into the photos in my camera roll, back into YouTube photo folder. There's my answers from dad. And then it brings it in. I'm gonna shrink it down to maybe about there and then drag it over. Maybe it's a little bit too big. Maybe drag it over like there. So I have, the overlay that I want to use. So I want to save it. So again, you know, I like to go into images, open it back up, and we're going to export this now. So in order to export it, I'm going to go to the top bar again. Next to the question mark, there's a little square box with the up arrow. That's the export button. And I'm going to say by pressing send a copy. And we're going to save it as a PNG file, which is very important because that will maintain the transparent background. If you save it as a JPEG, it's going to be less quality. Plus, it's not going to have that transparent background. It's going to create a um, uh, probably a background if we save it as a JPEG as those checkers. I'm not sure, but do know that if we save it as PNG, it will work. It's going to press PNG and I'm just going to save it as onto my camera roll. I could also save it to Drive or I could email it to myself. Um, I could airdrop it, um, save it to iCloud Drive, but I'm gonna save it right to the camera roll. So that's what I just did. We're done with Pixelmator. So that's pretty cool, pretty easy. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial on how to uh, make overlays. Um, if you haven't watched our other video that we did on how to do channel art using Pixelmator, then up in the eye in the sky, just click on that and you can watch that video. It's very helpful. And we make our thumbnails, almost all of our thumbnails now that we've done in the last couple months since we found Pixelmator, we use Pixelmator. It only costs $4.99, it's a really good value. If you like these kind of videos, plus our other videos that we do on Dragon Veil, on Minecraft, um, some Xbox games, um, answers from dad, Pokemon. We do a variety of videos, but all kind of geared about the same. If you like that stuff, consider subscribing. And when you do subscribe, make sure you press the bell icon. So that way you get notified every time that we go live, which we're going to be doing more of coming up or every time we do a new video. So as Christopher always says, a very big thank you very much for watching and we'll see you later. Goodbye.